Welcome back everyone to The Casual Bartender. I hope you all had a great week so far. And as you can probably tell from the glassware in those opening shots today, we're gonna look at the history and make our very own Moscow Mule. So get your copper mugs ready for this week's episode of The Casual Bartender. Ah, oh, good job. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, God. There we are. <laughs> now, what do you get when you have a spirit that just won't sell, an overstock of ginger beer that you just don't know what to do with, and a connection to a whole crap load of copper mugs? Well, if you take all those things and add a little bit of marketing ingenuity, you have what we know today as the Moscow Mule. This is one of my favorite stories of how a cocktail came to be. It starts in 1939 when John G. Martin, president of G.F. Hublin & Brothers, which was an East Coast uh, food and spirit importer, they were better known for introducing A1 steak sauce to America. Well, John G. Martin, he decided to purchase a small vodka distillery for $14,000. This distillery was called Smirnoff. Yes, the very same Smirnoff. Unfortunately, during the late 30s and early 1940s, most people had never even heard of vodka or tasted it. So he was having a lot of trouble selling his new spirit. Well, one day in 1941, Martin went to his, visit his friend Jack Morgan, who is owner of the British pub uh, Cock and Bull, which is located on Hollywood Sunset Strip. Martin just started to talk to Jack about his new distillery, and pr like his purchase and the dilemma that nobody wanted to drink this vodka. He just couldn't sell it. Jack Morgan, in turn, he began to complain to Martin about his stockpile of house-made ginger beer that was down in his basement just collecting dust. So both men claimed that it was through a fit of inventive genius that brought them to the idea of combining their products. But the story doesn't end there. According to Ted, Dr. Cocktail Hag, uh, in his book Vintage Spirits and Forgotten Cocktails, he adds another relevant fact to this story, and that is the way of the copper mug, how that played into the creation of this cocktail. Jack Morgan had a girlfriend who owned a company that made copper products, thus giving him a really good connection to that crap ton of copper mugs that I mentioned in the beginning. But the story doesn't end there! After having ordered specially engraved copper mugs and purchasing one of the first Polaroid cameras, Martin took off to hit the bars around the country. What he did here is the genius part. He would take his product into the bar, give everyone a copper mug and the Moscow Mule, and as they were drinking, he would just sit there and take a picture on his Polaroid camera and print out two copies. He'd give one copy to that bar, and then he'd take the other copy to a neighborhood bar, one of the bar's competition, and show them what the other bars were doing that they weren't. By doing this across the country, and marketing all three elements together, Martin Sales and Smirnoff tripled in 1950 and doubled by 1951. Now that we've traveled back in time to learn about the cocktail, let's get back to reality and actually make one of these bad boys. One thing I would suggest is to throw your mugs in the freezer at the start of this so that while you're shaking a cocktail, you can grab the chilled mug out of the freezer and crack the ice right into it before you pour. If you don't have any copper mugs, you can just use a Collins glass instead. It's still the same. The prep for this cocktail includes making your own homemade ginger syrup. So if you watched that short earlier this week, I showed you how to make your own ginger syrup. If you don't have a juicer, it's okay to use store-bought ginger beer, but just know that you may need to add some simple syrup depending on how sweet the store-bought ginger beer is. And this really just comes down to your own taste. If you don't have the time or the juicer to make the ginger syrup, then I would recommend using either Bundaberg ginger beer or Gosling's. I find that the pepperiness of those two brands of ginger beer most resemble what you'd get if you made it yourself. But don't be lazy! Take the time. If you have a juicer, just make it yourself. So let's make our Moscow Mule. First, we're going to take our small shaker tin. And in the small shaker tin, we're going to add a half ounce of lime juice. Perfect. Be sure to hit your marks. There you go, half ounce of lime juice. Next, we're gonna follow that up with three quarters of an ounce of our homemade ginger syrup. Three quarters of an ounce right there. Excellent. And finally, we're gonna be using two ounces of vodka. Now, uh, you can stick to the original recipe and use Smirnoff vodka here, or if you prefer, you can use another type of vodka. Just go ahead, try that one if you'd like. Uh, today we're gonna be using Hangar One Vodka. So we're gonna add two ounces of vodka. Bang. 
excellent. And next up, we're gonna get a whip shake. Why? Because we used three quarters of an ounce of ginger syrup. So first thing you're gonna do, put the large, the large on the top. Remember, we're doing this without ice. Just give it a nice whip. Shake, 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 Sonora. All right. Next, what we're gonna do, we are going to take out the ice. Nice big chunk of ice right in there. And a couple of smaller ones. There we go. All right. And if you're ready, that's already chilled. It's got a nice frost to it. Now we're gonna add the ice since we have already whipped. And now we're gonna give it a medium, medium shake. So, next we're gonna add last. Oh, that got exciting. The last little bit is two ounces, one, it's like one and a half to two ounces of soda water to the tin. I'm just gonna add two. Just gives it that nice little sparkle. Oh, yeah. Right there, perfect. And take our Hawthorne strainer. Don't forget to close the gate. So, we close the gate and strain. Just like that. Next we're gonna take. And for the garnish, like I said, it could be uh, a spear ginger, um, a candy ginger spear, or uh, you can use a lime wheel. I like to use mint as well as a lime wheel. So you're gonna take your little sprig of mint and don't forget, gotta slap the mint. Slap it. Oh, wake it up. There you go. Place the mint right inside the cocktail, just like so. And we'll take one little lime wheel. Wheel with a straw. And there you have it. There's your Moscow meal. Let's give it a try. Let's give it a try. Oh my god. Oh, it's so good! It's so good! And it's so easy. Well, I hope you guys have enjoyed this episode. I had a great time teaching you about the history of the Moscow Mule. Uh, be sure to leave some comments below, like some of the uh, videos that we posted on Facebook or any of our other social media sites, Instagram, uh, Twitter. And make sure to follow us next week as we get another cocktail going for you guys. Be safe this weekend, have an awesome time, and from all of us here at The Casual Bartender, keep it casual. Blueberry, baby!